Hey everybody, welcome back to another OCHEM video. Today we'll be covering the last part of organic chemistry reactions for the MCAT, which will be on carboxylic acids and their derivatives. So we'll start by ranking the reactivity of carboxylic acids and their derivatives. So we're concerned with five main carboxylic acid derivatives. And this will be slightly similar, but slightly different from what we did with aldehydes and ketones. So if we recall, aldehydes and ketones do addition reactions where we have some nucleophile, the partially positive carbon of the carbonyl, will attack the carbon of the carbonyl. We will break a pi bond and create a new sigma bond. So addition is gonna be gain of a sigma bond, which is to a nucleophile loss of a pi bond, which is the carbonyl. We said in our first video that elimination is going to be gain of a pi bond, which will be Uh, it, and it could, be, uh, it could be any kind of pi bond. It could be a carbonyl uh, or it could be an alkene. With E1 and E2, we saw alkenes. With, today, what we're going to see is this is going to be carbonyl. So we'll, we'll leave this unspecified as to what the pi bond is because it could be any pi bond. It could be an alkene or a carbonyl. And then elimination will be loss of a sigma bond, which is to a leaving group. Somebody value is on. Perfect, got it. So, and then lastly, we said substitution. Substitution was gain of a sigma bond, which is to a nucleophile, loss of a sigma bond, which is to a leaving group. So then if we consider addition and elimination, and that's gonna be the theme of today's reactions is addition elimination reactions. If we think about what the net reaction of an addition elimination is, if we're losing a, a pi bond and we're also gaining a pi bond, we can think of these as canceling out to a substitution reaction. So carboxylic acid derivatives will be doing a net substitution reaction. Any questions so far? And our generic addition elimination, actually we're gonna say, we're gonna hold that thought for our generic reaction uh, while we talk about the, react the reactivity order for carboxylic acid derivatives as electrophiles. So we also specified with aldehydes and ketones, if they have a minor resonance structure contributor. And this is gonna be true with carboxylic acid derivatives as well. And if we were to show those minor resonance structures. So what's true of all carboxylic acid derivatives is they will have, instead of another uh, another carbon or instead of a hydrogen like alkene, sorry, like aldehydes and ketones have, they have some other group Y, which is typically an electronegative group and has a lone pair. And so this is gonna impact our minus, minor resonance structure contributors as we'll see now. So then if we do our first minor resonance structure contributor, 
we have an O minus, a carbocation, and a group Y is so far unchanged. So what's different with carboxylic acids and their derivatives is the group Y can also participate in a minor resonance structure contributor. So these aldehydes and ketones are gonna have more minor resonance structures. When this Y group makes a bond with carbon, it might help us stabilize our carbocation. In itself is going to gain a positive charge. So these are going to be our three resonance structures. Let me go over there. These are three um, resonance structures to consider when we're talking about the reactivity order of these carboxylic acids and derivatives. So let's list out our important carboxylic acids and derivatives. We'll start with, and feel free to call out these as you see them, if you recognize what they are. What's this first guy? What's the name of this guy? So this will be an acid acyl halide, perfect. Acyl halide. Um, we'll call these guys an acid or acyl halide. Actually, I'm really glad you mentioned the term acyl. Whenever you see an AC, the mention of something that's an acyl, we're talking about a carboxylic acid derivative. Um, a couple of groups uh, that are that we could call acyl. We'll see something like acetyl. Which is this guy. You have a carbonyl with a methyl. Uh, we might see a carbonyl with a hydrogen. Anybody know what this guy's called? Aldehyde. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a substituent, this guy is termed formyl. So form, remember it means one carbon, a seat. Remember, it means two carbons. So for instance, formaldehyde or let's say two carbon carboxylic acid called. What is a two carbon carboxylic acid called? Mm -hmm. Acetic acid, right? Acetic acid. And then, so good, good things to be familiar with, giving you potentially a little bit of additional context when you see them mentioned. So then if we had, for instance, a acid chloride with, this, with two carbons, we could call this guy acetyl chloride. Uh, two carbons. So we have our acid halide. And what is this guy's name? Anhydride. Anhydride. Um, this person who DM'd me and the chloride OH would be chloric acid or is that a jump? Uh, chloric acid is HClO3. So kind of a different thing, yeah, where, where CL is actually the one uh, with the, how does this go again? CL is actually the one with the double bond O. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so this, is, this would be chloric acid, yeah. Pretty good acid, right? We have a lot of potential for making resonance structures when that H leaves. By the way, would this serve as a good leaving group? Would this be something that serves as a good leaving group? 
Yeah, this would be a superb leaving group. So actually, we're kind of ahead of ourselves, but for a good reason. Um, one thing that we're going to be discussing on sort of this section of ranking reactivity, I think we're going to discuss is the stronger the acid, the better leaving group its conjugate base. So if you're a strong acid uh, and large halogens, yes, that as well. Yeah. Um, so if you're a strong acid, you're willing to give up that H plus and become A minus. So you must be very stable as an A minus. Your conjugate base must be very stable. And so if you're very stable as a conjugate base, when you give up an H plus and take on a negative charge, it stands to reason that you'd also be very good at leaving, acting as a leaving group and taking on a negative charge. So this is gonna be key. And uh, yeah, something that pops up all around organic chemistry. Question so far, why is A minus stable? Um, person who DM'd me. Why is A minus stable? So if we have a very, if we have a strong acid, or the stronger we could say the stronger our acid is, the more willing it is to give up H plus. And what happens when you give up H plus? You become A minus. So if you're a good acid, your conjugate base has to be stable without H plus. Otherwise, you wouldn't give up H plus. And likewise. Therefore, your conjugate base could also serve as a great leaving group. So for instance, HCl, hydrochloric acid, Cl minus, very willing to give up that H plus. Why? Because we know Cl minus, first of all, Cl is very electronegative. It's also fairly large. And so it's able to delocalize that negative charge and it's very stable as a conjugate base. In fact, it's so stable that Cl minus would never get back together with H plus. Likewise, we know Cl minus makes a great leaving group. So that's the comparison. Okay, so we have acid and hydride. Acid and hydride. Ooh, gotta make sure that I save room for every, everybody so I don't end up with a failure to plan ahead situation like last time. <laughs> Acid and hydride. And then we'll have esters. We'll have carboxylic acids. Oh no, they're getting they're getting smaller. We'll have carboxylic acids themselves. And our last carboxylic acid derivative, the MCAT will be amides. So when we consider the reactivity of these guys, there's gonna be three factors that we'll talk about. So in terms of what we'll call substituent effects. We'll be talking about electronegativity. We'll be talking about leaving group ability. And we'll talk about pi bonding ability. Okay, so let's talk about how these three substituent effects are going to relate to these structures down here. So in our structures, we have an unstable carbocation. That's the first problem. If we have a more electronegative group as our Y, is that going to help stabilize or destabilize the carbocation? More electronegative Y group will stabilize or destabilize the carbocation. Well, see the problem though, 
is this carbon electron dense or electron poor? Yeah, this carbon is electron poor. So if Y is more electronegative, is that helping or hurting? Exactly. Helping or hurting, it's hurting, yeah. So electronegativity will destabilize this carbon. Leaving group ability. Is that going to make our derivatives more reactive or less reactive? Having a good leaving group that make these more or less reactive? Of course, more reactive. And then lastly, pi bonding ability. So this is something that maybe we haven't considered before. So who is better at making a pi bond to elements of similar size? Or two elements of different size. Who's gonna be better at making a pi bond? Of similar size, right? We can see that this pi bond is a little more stretched. And so this guy would be more stable and this guy would be more unstable. So our rule for pi bonding ability, and that's gonna play in right here, is that elements in the same period will make better pi bonds than elements in a different period. The better your pi bond that you're making here, the more stable you're going to be, okay? So we have higher electronegativity, would increase instability, would raise free energy, better leaving group ability, more reactive, higher free energy, better pi bonding ability, more stable, lower free energy. So that's gonna be the game we're gonna play here. Um, we're gonna use up and down arrows to indicate up being higher free energy, more unstable, more reactive. Down, meaning less free energy, um, more stable, less reactive. Okay, any questions so far? Um, Charlie, you said same period, better pi bonds, better pi bonds are more stable. Exactly. Okay, and then what And what was it about the other trend that you talked about? Uh, electronegativity. So the more electronegative the Y is, uh -huh. the more it's taking away from a electron deficient carbon and the more unstable, more reactive, higher free energy. So electronegativity gonna serve to increase free energy and then better leaving group ability is going to also um, lead to higher reactivity. You have a better leaving group, you're more unstable. You're more likely to lose that leaving group. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, person, uh, let's see, wait, so sorry, one more time for the trends. Oh, is that, okay, cool. Yes, exactly. All right, so let's go through these guys. Um, and then, yeah. So what we're also gonna talk about is some PKA values almost don't have enough room for PKA. Um, how do I solve my problem? No, write these slightly smaller. We'll do electronegativity, pi bond ability, and leaving group ability because uh, we're talking about PKA values to assess leaving group ability. So oh, our, first, our first derivative, the acid chloride. So will an acid chloride tend to have a Y group that is highly electronegative or not really electronegative? Yeah, acid chlorides, we've got Cl, we've got Br, we've got iodine. So we have an electronegative group, remember, that's taking away electron density from our electron deficient carbon. So do we give this an up arrow or a down arrow? I wouldn't give that guy an up arrow. And then for pi bonding ability, would Cl, Br, and I be good at pi bonding with carbon or bad? 
they're bad. So is that going to stabilize or destabilize? That's going to destabilize. So they don't pi bond well. We'll give that an up arrow. And then if we think about the types of acids made by CLBR and I, are those strong acids or weak acids? Yeah, those are strong acids. Um, the pKa values for these guys range from minus seven to minus 10. They literally, that's right, they literally have negative values for their pKa because that's how strong they are. And so would these make good leaving groups or poor leaving groups then? Yeah, these are gonna be excellent leaving groups because they're really willing to give up an H. So they're really willing to leave a carbon as well. They'll leave an H, they'll leave a carbon as well. So we have fantastic leaving groups because we have such acidic conjugate acids of them. Uh, and would that mean that they are stabilizing or destabilizing? Well, if they're leaving, they're, if they really, really wanna leave, then they're destabilizing. And so we're going to actually rate that two up arrows for excellent leaving groups. So any questions for our acid halides? That's what we're going to do for the rest of these derivatives. I had a quick question because um, that's where I'm getting confused is I thought that a leaving group would, it, you would want to stabilize it uh, can you explain that again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if something's a good leaving group, um, that means that it must be stable as a minus. Because we know when leaving groups leave, they take on a negative charge. So to be right. a good leaving group, we use basically the same justification as what makes something a strong acid. If you're a strong acid, you're willing to give up an H. If you're a good and become negative. If you're a good leaving group, you're willing to give up a carbon and take on a negative. Okay, so the leaving group becomes stable, but the species that it left becomes destabilized. The species that it's going to leave from is is unstable because this guy is just like it's a flaky friend. Oh, <laughs> the friend, the friend okay. is going to leave, and you're going to be you're going to be SOL. <laughs> Okay, got yep. it. Yep. Um, in what biological context will we see acid halides? Uh, never. Acid halides are way, 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 is that enough ways? Too reactive to be in the body. Yeah. Um, or, or in any biological system. These guys, you will see, if, if anything, you'll see them in some kind of um, chemical or biotechnological, like some kind of you know, here's how this drug, like some drug, hypothetical drug was made and one of the steps involved an acid chloride because it was a really reactive way to add uh, a carbon meal, something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So acid anhydrides. So do we have an electronegative Y group? I'm gonna put our Y groups in a box. Yeah, we have a electronegative oxygen and another oxygen. So we're gonna give that guy an up arrow for electronegativity. What about pi bonding ability? Would these guys be able to pi bond well, carbon and oxygen? Yeah, carbon and oxygen, same period of the periodic table. And so our rule was if you're in the same period of the periodic table, you're gonna be good at pi bonding. So is that gonna stabilize or destabilize the acid anhydride? Stabilize. You got a good pi bond. You're able to help stabilize using this resonance structure. So comparing the this resonance structure for these two groups. For this guy, this resonance structure is a lot harder to form, and therefore doesn't terrible doesn't do a good job of like helping to stabilize the other guys. Acid and hydrides, they do have good pi bonding ability. We'll give them a down arrow for that. What is the conjugate? Uh, or what is, what is the leaving group here known as? Or what is it the conjugate base of? Uh, 
our y group. What is that the conjugate? What, what is that known as? Or what is it the conjugate base of? Is it of an acetyl? Um, close, but we're, we got to consider that O as well. Um, I'll give you a hint, it's on the board. Carboxylate, yep. So we have the conjugate acid, sorry, conjugate base of a carboxylic acid. We have a carboxylate. Does anybody know the pKa value of a typical carboxylic acid? So not a C terminal. The C terminal is two, N terminal is nine. What about a carboxylic acid that is not in an amino acid? It's gonna be closer to five. So is that gonna be as good of a leaving group? No, not quite. In the grand context of things, it will be a better leaving group than what we're about to see follow. And so we will give that guy one up arrow for leaving group ability. Because it's a good leaving group, it's resonance stabilized, but it's nowhere near as good as a halogen or a halide. The question's for acid anhydrides. I'm lost on the pi bond part, because I thought that, mm -hmm. well, we don't really know what our R group would be, but it is in like the same period, I thought. So like the O. Mm -hmm. The carbon and the oxygen, yep. Yeah. So the reason, so that's the reason why we gave, uh, we, we gave this a down arrow for pi bonding ability, because when this group is an oxygen, it has a good ability to bond, to pi bond with carbon because they're very similar size. And so because they're of similar size and able, thus able to pi bond well, that will help stabilize the carboxylic, sorry, the carboxylic acid derivative and therefore make it less reactive. Does that make sense? Oh, so necessarily saying that just because they have high pi bond ability doesn't make it more stable. Uh, having having good pi bond ability in this case do, uh, does make it more stable. Yeah, actually, because this resonance structure is more stabilized. So overall, the molecule is more stabilized. So that's why we gave it a down arrow for lower free energy, more stability, lower reactivity. Oh, oh, I see. My bad. I was treating... Down I arrow as stability. Free energy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just to reiterate, yeah, um, the up arrow is going to be in regards to free energy. So a higher, so an up arrow will indicate higher free energy, more un, more reactivity, less stability. Down arrow will indicate lower free energy, um, more stability, and lower reactivity. Okay. Thank you. Mm, my pleasure. All right. And then what about esters? Electronegativity. How do we rate that? Uh, up or down, we'll give it an up. We have, an, we have another oxygen, it's an electronegative element. It's going to destabilize this resonance structure. What about pi bonding ability, what do we give it? We give another down, because oxygen, you know, is good at pi bonding, it will help stabilize our situation. What this is this OR group? the conjugate base of what functional group? In other words, an ROH is what functional group? Mm -hmm. Alcohol, right? Anybody know the pKa of an alcohol? Uh, phenol would be 10. Uh, phenol is gonna be more acidic than a typical one. Yeah, around 16, 15, 16. So, we're getting into the weak acid territory for sure. Um, and then for, uh, for leaving group ability, would that be a good leaving group or a poor leaving group? It's a poor leaving group, which is gonna make this less reactive, more stable. We'll give that a down arrow. So that's our first down arrow for leaving group ability. We're starting to get into the territory of poor leaving groups. That makes sense to people. Any questions on Esther? Um, Charlie, why is it poor leaving group? Uh, yeah. So what we have is as a leaving group would be OR minus. And this is an alkoxide. 
such as you may have seen something like NaOET. What do we know about NaOET? Is that a strong base, strong nucleophile? Strong base, yep, and strong nucleophile. So this is actually very basic. And we know that therefore its conjugate must not be very acidic. And if it's very basic, it's very nucleophilic. That means it's very unstable, very reactive. And so we have an unstable leaving group because this O is more content than a less electronegative atom to have a negative charge, but it's still not happy. And it doesn't have ways to stabilize that negative charge the way that the O of the carboxylate does, such as resonance or the way that these large halides do have a way to stabilize the charge via um, polarizability. So does that help answer your question? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. All right. And then carboxylic acids, we're just going to say, are equal to esters, and that is basically true. Um, the only real difference is a carbon versus a hydrogen. Carboxylic acids and esters are um, about as reactive as each other. Uh, we'll do like a like same. And then lastly, amides. So amides, what about uh, electronegativity? Do you have an electronegative group here? And do we give it an up or down arrow? You get that guy an up arrow. The nitrogen is also pretty electronegative. Slightly less than O, right? And then what about pi bonding ability? Would that be good or bad, pi bonding ability? Are they in the same period? Yep, good pi bonding ability. We'll give that a down arrow. And then lastly, I wouldn't expect you to know this pKa value, but what is the group, the Y group? What is it a conjugate base of? NH3 ammonia, or if this was a substituted amide, uh, it would be the conjugate base of an amine. So how acidic is ammonia or how acidic are amines? And the answer is not very. So the pKa of ammonia is 35. This is for it losing a hydrogen. Um, remember, in, um, in amino acid context, when we talk about the pKa value of the N-terminus, we're talking about the pKa value of NH3+, the ammonium giving up the proton, not the NH2 giving up the proton to become NH2- minus or NH-. minus. Um, so we want to keep that in mind because we all have that, that pKa9 value in our heads from amino acid chemistry. Uh, and this is going to be this is going to be different because we're not talking about the NH uh, three plus of the N terminus losing a proton. We're actually talking about the NH two losing a proton, um, and that is very very weak acid. And so in this case, we're going to give it up or down arrow for leaving group ability. Down arrow, and in fact, we give that guy two down arrows. So you're pretty much saying that something is a conjugate base would make it a really poor leaving group, unlike NH3 would be a good leaving group, or am I totally off the mark? Um, so if we, like if we had a scenario like where we had this, like this would be a great leaving group because when it leaves, it's not getting a minus charge, it's gonna be neutral as ammonia. Right. This is a very poor leaving group because when NH2 leaves, it's gonna become NH2 minus, which uh, as we'll talk about when we go into gen chem is one of the strong, acid, strong bases to memorize. NH2 minus is a strong base. It's a very poor leaving group. What is your question? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we sum up our results here, we're going to give, uh, we'll do like up arrows is like a plus one and down arrows is a minus one. So acid halides, what do they end up? Plus. Uh, 
Oh, okay. So we're going to tally our up arrows and down arrows. Up arrows is going to count as plus one. Down arrows are going to count as minus one. So we have one, two, three, four. Plus four, perfect. So plus four. Uh, what about anhydrides? We get two up, one down. We'll give this guy a plus one. And esters. It's going to be a minus one. Same with carboxylic acids, they're equal. And then amides are minus two. And so that is going to describe our reactivity order. Oh, look at that, it's the, it's the way I wrote it. <laughs> so you do need to be very familiar with this reactivity order. Um, do I expect the MCAT to test you in detail these substituent effects? I don't. Uh, the reason for going over these is to emphasize a whole bunch of other topics that, like resonance structures, uh, pi bonding, acidity, leaving group ability, um, inductive effect, and yeah, uh, any questions on our reactivity order? Could we apply it to a question if you get time? You will. You will definitely be applying this to a question. So like, let's say uh, we had, let's say we had, um, which of the following is least likely to be digested quickly in the acidic um, environment of the stomach? Uh, triglycerides or proteins? Uh, the question is basically like, which one is less susceptible to hydrolysis? Triglycerides or proteins? Mm. So what, uh, what functional group out of the above is present in a triglyceride? For, pep, for proteins, we would be talking about amide. In a triglyceride, we're talking about esters. So we'll talk about biomolecules uh, in our next session, or we'll, we'll get into biomolecules in the last lectures of organic chemistry. Um, so you will know by the end of that, the triglycerides are triacylglycerols, they have esters, um, proteins have amides. And so which of these would be less susceptible to hydrolysis by a nucleophilic attack of water? And it would be the proteins, right? Because proteins have peptide bonds, which are amides. And so amides are going to be the most stable to hydrolysis by a nucleophilic attack. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of like the types of questions you can start to expect with regards to this like reactivity order. Um, they could also ask you about it in an organic chemistry context. They could say, oh, which of the following would make the, would be the best for accomplishing this transformation where we want to add a carbonyl. And it might be like acid chloride, acid anhydride, ester, and amide, and you would choose. Uh, my reason was there's more of a minus charge on reactivity, hence it won't. Yeah, for amides. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's right. Oh, so that was the thought process that you can't do hydrolysis because of it being technically so stable. Yeah. yeah, because they're so unreactive that they're very, very stable. Unreactive with a negative two compared mm -hmm. to a negative one, right? Exactly. Okay, thank you. Sorry, that was silly. Yeah. No, of course. Any other questions on this? Let me pull the whiteboard back. So if you'd like to get a good screenshot, let me try to cover some of the glare. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, any other questions before I erase a whole lot of things? And the part on the bottom is just showing us like the reactivity, like the resonance, right? Sorry, not reactivity. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, the resonance contributors, yeah. Oh, thank you. And so actually, thank you for, for bringing that up again, because one thing I, was, I wanted to also point out is that because all, all of these have, well, in varying degrees, as we just discussed, 
more resonance than aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes and ketones are over here on this side. They don't even have three resonance structures. They have two resonance structures. Um, you wouldn't have to compare acid halides reactivity with aldehydes and ketones um, because depending on the source, you'll see like aldehyde, ketone, then, then the rest of these, or some sources will say aldehyde, acid halide, ketone, and then the rest of these. But just to be aware, aldehyde and ketone are over here on this side. So um, let's see, one thing we want to, we're switching gears now, we're gonna start talking about reactions. So our first reaction is decarboxylation. So this is kind of a special case. But a very important reaction for the MCAT. So if we take a beta ketoester, sorry, beta keto acid, and we apply heat, what happens to the carboxylic acid? Denatures. Uh, denaturing we'd usually talk about more for like larger molecules. It's gonna break off, right? Not gonna release water. Uh, it's gonna release a gas. carbon dioxide. So a very common uh, thing to see on the MCAT is decarboxylation of a beta hydroxy carboxylic acid, sorry, a beta keto acid under the presence of high temperatures or under enzymatic action will cause loss of a carboxylic acid as CO2. This is a lot of reactions that we've seen in uh, particularly pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and the citric acid cycle for um, alpha keto, uh, for isocitrate dehydrogenase, we have a decarboxylation for alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, we also have a decarboxylation. So very common to see these in metabolism um, and as well in reaction schemes. So if you ever like have, uh, you have a structure, you notice that in your next structure, there's a carboxylic acid missing and they ask you, there's a gas uh, or the reaction bubbled. And they ask you, what is the identity of the gas? You're always gonna say carbon dioxide. Any questions on decarboxylation? So when they talk about decarboxylation, should we just like automatically think of like CO2? Always, yep. Okay. Anything else on decarboxylations? All right, so let's talk about how to synthesize these derivatives from carboxylic acid. So we're starting from, we'll just use acetic acid and we want to make an ester, we want to make an amide, uh, we want to make an acid chloride, we want to synthesize an acid and hydride. So what reaction would we need if we wanted to turn a carboxylic acid into an ester? What reaction or reactions come to mind? This one has a, a name associated with it too. The process of making an ester, mm -hmm. it'll be a nucleophilic substitution. Not an SN1 or SN2. Not a Grignard. So this will be Fischer esterification.
in acidic conditions, we would run an alcohol with the corresponding R group of the ester with H plus. So Fischer esterification. How would we synthesize an acid anhydride? In this case, we would need a second equivalent of carboxylic acid. What you should know about anhydrides is that acid, presence of H plus, assists in these guys reacting together. Acid promotes formation of the anhydride. Acid promotes formation. Base promotes hydrolysis. So if we think about the net reaction between these two, looks like they're joined by a single oxygen, which means that we're losing one hydrogen and one OH in the process of making this. So we have lost a water and we've linked two carboxylic acids in sort of like a dimer situation known as an acid anhydride. And that's why it is known as an acid anhydride because it's acid and hydride, there's loss of water. Any questions on acid and hydride? Synthesis. And then these last two, even know the reagent needed to, oh, my pleasure. Anybody needed to know the reagent needed to do this transformation? Sockle too, nice. So this is a special reagent. A special reagent that does addition, elimination. Uh, you can also use this to turn an alcohol into an acid chloride. And then what would we reuse? What do we react with this carboxylic acid to make this amide? NH4Cl, good. Yeah. So we would use either NH3 or NH4, as you indicated. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the problem? with just adding these two guys together. Any problems before? Well, we have, uh, what kind of a molecule is ammonia? The acid base, Lewis, uh, is it a um, nucleophile, electrophile? Is it a leaving group, reducing agent, oxidizing agent? Ammonia is a base, right? And a nucleophile. And it's weak at both. So if we add these together, are they just going to form an amide or are they going to perform a acid base proton transfer? What happens faster? Acid base or nucleophilic addition? Acid base happens faster. So we use a special reagent you may have heard of known as DCC. And what it does is it prevents the acid base reaction from happening. Because that's probably not what we want to do. Is DCC the same as DCM? Uh, DCM, if I if I am um, thinking of the right DCM would be dichloromethane. So um, it would be a little different because dichloromethane would just be CH2Cl2. So let's look at an example of DCC doing its thing. Uh, DCC mechanism.
I like this one. Oh, it wants me to download it. I don't like that one anymore. I like this one. Perfect. So here's our DCC example. So we have our carboxylic acid and it's gonna react first with this DCC. So here's our R group, here's our carboxylic acid and it looks like it's been made into what functional group? Our carboxylic acid has undergone probation of an ester so what probably happened here is we had our, let's see. This is guys, the one on the left. This guy's the one on the right. Then we had this bond form, no, not with that guy. This bond react with this guy. And now we no longer have an acid, we have an ester. And our, oh wait, this is an anhydride. <laughs> okay, well that's a curveball that I was not expecting. Uh, okay, we'll just use this one, even though it's like a little uglier. Or what about this guy? This is good. Is this one gonna be, yeah, this is gonna be an amide. Okay, so then this one has our arrows already, perfect. Okay, so we have the nitrogen, it's doing some kind of, oh, the nitrogen deprotonates our carboxylic acid, we have a carboxylate, we have a nucleophilic attack happen, and then we now no longer have an acidic OH, so the amine can now attack the carbonyl and do our addition reaction, and now we have made our carbonyl carbon to nitrogen bond, so we avoided that whole acid-base situation. We have a good leaving group. And so then elimination will occur. This guy will get eliminated. So we should, if we are, our definition of elimination holds up, we should see loss of a sigma bond to a leaving group and gain of a pi bond. So we have, this bond is going to break. Wait, no, this bond is going to break. And then we form a new pi bond right here. All right, so that's um, how, if you're ever curious how DCC worked uh, or if you've heard of DCC, uh, should we know that reaction? No, it is just for our own edification. All right, and then any questions here before I go ahead and move on? All right. Okay, so let's see, we're gonna go over the generic addition elimination reaction. We're going to do saponification, Fischer esterification, and trans esterification, and we will be done with carboxylic acid. So, Let's go over addition, elimination, reactions. Our generic version, we have a Y group or a leaving group. We have a partially positive carbonyl carbon partially negative carbonyl oxygen. And we have some nucleophile. So far, very much the same as how an aldehyde or a ketone works, reacts. And this intermediate has a special name. Does anybody know the name of that intermediate? Or if you don't know the name, what is the geometry at the carbon in the center? Cool. 
close. Tetra. Tetrahedral intermediate. We call it tetrahedral because, of course, the carbon that was originally sp2 with 120 degree bond angles is now sp3. With 109.5 bond angles. We have our tetrahedral intermediate. And then what's different in an aldehyde or a ketone reaction, we would protonate the oxygen and be done. In this reaction, we have a leaving group. And we discussed some of them are better leaving groups than others. And so here is our addition reaction. We broke a pi bond, formed a sigma bond. Here's our elimination reaction. We broke a sigma bond, we formed a pi bond. So overall, you could think about this as a net substitution. Uh, I, I tutored for a organic chemistry professor who called these reactions snack reactions because they're substitution reactions at acyl centers, snacks. <laughs> cool, any questions on our generic version, generic reaction? All right. uh, thanks. Um, what's the second reagent? Are you thinking, talking about this? Oh, um, addition, elimination. So there's, there's no second reagent here. This guy doesn't need anything to, to, to encourage it to form the pi bond to kick off the leaf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. All right, cool. So now we're going to go over three examples of addition elimination reactions that you definitely will see on your practice material and potentially on your MCAT. The first is going to be saponification. We'll probably revisit a good amount of these when we talk about uh, biomolecules in our upcoming OCHEM. Saponification is going to be base catalyzed ester hydrolysis. Base catalyzed ester hydrolysis. We have our hydroxide, which is a good nucleophile. We'll form our tetrahedral intermediate. We'll kick off our leaving group. And we'll form carboxylic acid with our leaving group here. And uh, we would require acid workup for this. Acid uh, to quench hydroxide. Because we did this reaction in base, um, if we were to just leave this guy unattended, it would get deprotonated by more base. So we would add acid at the end to quench the hydroxide. This is a term you're gonna see come up in some passages, quench. Um, so I guess let's do a working definition of quench. Quench is um, a workup step to uh, say like neutralize, get rid of, get rid of, very scientific, um, to get rid of a reagent 
uh, from a previous step. Because if we don't get rid of the reagent, punch implies, if we don't get rid of the reagent, we're not gonna get the product that we want. Uh, oh, base, base catalyzed. Um, so any questions on saponification? So saponification, as we'll talk about in um, part four of OCHEM, which is on biomolecules, um, would be a way to take a triglyceride and break it into fatty acids and glycerol. So Charlie, for this reaction, you are adding um, acid to remove the alcohol from the carboxylic acid and to be left with the OET? Okay, yeah, so what the problem is, is we did our reaction in base. So if we leave this guy unattended, the hydroxide is going to steal the proton. So if we want to obtain the carboxylic acid and not the carboxylate, we would need to then add acid and the acid will react, will, will give us our proton back and then neutralize any remaining hydroxide. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And transesterification. Transesterification will be going from one ester to another ester. And the mechanism will be the exact same. Any questions on transesterification? And lastly, the mechanism that everybody loves so much. Fisher esterification. The reaction in Fischer esterification itself is not very complicated. We'll have a carboxylic acid. We'll add an alcohol and H plus. And we'll get an ester and water. The reaction itself is not complicated. So while I would say the most complicated reaction that we have to know for the MCAT is aldol condensation, the most complicated mechanism you need to know for the MCAT is Fischer esterification. And there is a full length from AMC that expects you to know mechanistic detail for Fischer esterification. So we gotta know this, um, but we'll come up with some ways to kind of simplify this, we'll have a good mnemonic for it. We'll be all, all happy and safe while we do this. Okay, so the first thing that we do in Fisher is serification. The problem that we have here is we have a carboxylic acid, which is not a very reactive derivative. And we have an alcohol, which likewise is not a very reactive nucleophile. So there's, so that's the reason why we're using H plus. The H plus will, enhance carbonyl reactivity, as we'll show now. So first step, we'll protonate the carbonyl oxygen. We'll call this a P for protonation.
because if we recall, there's a minor resonance structure that's carbocationic, cationic, but also has an oxygen that has a minus. So when we show that resonance structure here, we'll still have our carbocation. But we won't have our O minus anymore. So what we've done is we've made this resonance structure by protonating the oxygen more stable. Um, and so therefore the positive charge on our carbocation is in a more stable resonance structure, meaning that, oops, this is supposed to have a plus charge, meaning that our carbon is becoming more electrophilic. Our carbon is becoming more electrophilic because we stabilize the resonance structure where the carbon has a positive charge by protonating the oxygen. Okay. Does that make sense to people? Any questions? Okay. And our next step, we're ready for our ethanol to come in. Oops, and it will attack. You can show it attacking either resonance structure. Because in reality, we never just have one resonance structure. The molecule always is a hybrid of both. And now, we have our addition reaction. So that was our addition reaction. So our nucleophile has come in, it broke a pi bond, we did an addition, it formed a sigma bond. And now we have our, not quite our, our main tetrahedral intermediate, but we do have a tetrahedral center here. And the problem with this O being positive is that's making it unstable, but we know that this guy is gonna stay, whereas our leaving group is going to leave. And so the next step will be a deprotonation And now we have our tetrahedral intermediate. So, so far we have P, A, D. The protonation and deprotonation to support the reactions going on here, the main of which being our addition. So next, we're going to want to initiate the leaving group leaving. And so we'll protonate it. And that will make it more unstable as is, and therefore more willing to leave. Protonate. And then now this guy's ready to leave.
and our original carbonyl oxygen will reform the carbonyl, kick off the leaving group, So here's our water that left. So I separate these guys here. And then a base, either water or another molecule of ethanol, will take the hydrogen and this was sorry this is deprotonation this was elimination we lost a sigma bond to a leaving group and we gained a pi bond in this case was a carbonyl so overall our mnemonic protonate add deprotonate protonate eliminate deprotonate pad ped so here's our overall reaction for fissure esterification feel free to take a screenshot yeah five four three two one and then quickly we'll finish up by talking about hydrolysis of esters in acid so we went over base catalyzed ester hydrolysis with saponification and so in acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis, does the opposite steps. Acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis does the opposite steps of Fischer esterification. So the first step in the reverse reaction would be protonation. The second step would be addition. Because we would add the water that left instead of eliminating it. The next step would be deprotonation. You would deprotonate the water to a hydroxyl. The next step would be Protonation, we would protonate this OET. The next step would be elimination. Instead of adding this OET, we would lose the OET. And our last step would be deprotonation as we deprotonate the carbonyl oxygen back to its original state. So if we look in totality at our reverse steps, P, A, D, P, E, D is also pad, pad. So it does the opposite steps in the opposite order, which funnily enough ends up being pad pad as well. And let's get rid of these just for, so we don't mix them up. All right, any questions about Fischer esterification or acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis? Any questions in general while we are still recording for our friends on YouTube? All right, everybody. So thank you for watching our latest OCHEM video. This was carboxylic acids and their derivatives and their reactions that you need to know for the MCAT. And I will see you next week for our first delve into biomolecules. We'll be starting with proteins. Goodbye, everybody, and feel free to subscribe for more OCHEM MCAT content.